I posted this image on my Instagram page and I got quite a feedback from a lot of people asking me how I went about color grading in Capture One. So yeah, it's been a while I posted a video on my YouTube channel and the last time I did mention that I had lost my voice and I'm still recovering. But yeah, I'm supposed to do a tutorial video of which I haven't so I just want to put this out there just so that you know I haven't left you guys and this is an image I shot last year, I think, let's see, is it, was it last year? Yeah, last year, January, 23rd of January, 2021, as of 10, 10 a.m. in the morning. Mm, this is an image I shot with a 5D Mark IV um, with a 35mm lens, lens f1.2, uh, I mean f1.4 lens. I have a video, I think I have the behind the scenes on my channel. I'm going to link it up as usual just so that you can watch and learn what I did or what went on during this collaboration process with I think Kobe Shot here if, if I remember correctly. But yeah, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kojo Joey as usual. If you haven't subscribed yet, please make it a point to subscribe. I want to make my goal to reach 10k subscribers this year. So help me get to 10k subscribers. Right, so looking at this image, if you've been with me here on my YouTube channel, you know I like to shoot somewhere a lot and how I go about editing my swimwear images, I have several videos of that and in today's video, we'll be sending this image from this to that here in Capture One. So I'm not going to do any adjustments, I'm just going to show you exactly what I did to get to this in Capture One, right? Um, I was literally bored, I'm, I'm, I'm bent out from creativity and I feel like, hey, let me just pick up an image and start playing around and well, this is what came out of me playing around so if i should open all of this under the exposure tab this is what i did here in the exposure tab usually i like to um reduce my exposure when it comes to you know looking at something like this right i i feel like it's too warm the greens have a lot of yellows in them the highlights are blown out her skin and as much as it's um tanned i want it i want to turn it the more right there was a time where i felt like i needed to keep how light a skin will look but you know creative choice creative wise you can do whatever it is you have to do with the skin just make sure it's a representative of what um the person will look in real life right under sunny condition of course you're going to see it like this and this is me trying to bring it down tone down the sunny condition so yeah, with that I reduced the brightness, my highlight just to bring back details to my highlights. I didn't want to have any, you know, my I didn't want to have my whites blowing, so I reduced the highlights. Nothing that I I didn't do really anything to the shadows, reduce the whites as usual, also reduce the blacks, and I pushed some blacks in the levels. Didn't touch the white here. And as you can see in my curve, you can see that I have pull down the linear curve from the white so literally i am reducing or taking away any information in my highlight so when i when i reset this you can see some of the information coming back i didn't want that i wanted everything to look soft and toned down right so that's what we have over here and if you're wondering i'm using capture one 22 22 yeah so if you haven't updated yours yet please do and here in my sharpening and my film grain initially right i just wanted to color grade see how i can just play around with the color grading and normally when i'm doing that i like to push in grains because after that i'll just export and upload them but after doing that i realized oh i can literally send it a step further into retouching then do quite a number of things here so you can see grains i usually don't like adding grains before photoshop but as you can see, I did it here and I forgot to remove it before I sent it to Photoshop. So, uh, just to make it look a little bit organic and natural. So, yeah, that's that. Now, to the color tab. In the color tab, when I reset the white balance, you can see image was warm enough, right? I cooled it down to just so that I can have my greens looking the way I wanted them to look. When I reset this, as you can see, the greens gain some form of yellow hue as compared to this, right? Like I mentioned earlier, I felt like there were a lot of yellow hues in there. And with Capture One, if you're trying to manipulate colors, it gives you, you know, much more room to do much more damage. And I don't want that. So 
rather than do the selective coloring i did i did do the selective coloring all right but i also managed to bring the greens to the direction i wanted with you know the white balance over here and in my base characteristics i always all the time i think change it from the generic to mac for pro standard i think the updated version of the 22 also has pro standard for 6d i like to keep it at pro standard let's see what the generic does you see the generic add some hints of reds into the midtones which isn't what i'm looking out for i think a lot of canon users have this kind of problem if you want to fix that make sure you're updated to capture 122 and just use the pro standard it will work if not you know you can do that by other adjustments here in capture one which i think i have a video on that on my youtube channel Eh, make sure you check it out go and look for it all right here in the color editor i'll start with the basic here in the basic in my reds as you can see pushing the lightness the saturation in my oranges you can see the hue change towards the yellows usually when you see me do this in lightroom i like to you know move it towards the reds the reason being i did a skin tone you know uniformity hue over here and as you can see this was what i selected and this was what the range i changed it to it looked a bit reddish for me so i used the basic you know basic tab or two over here to make sure it was in the right direction in terms of skin color with the yellows i sent it towards the greens when i reset this you can see i think it did something little it's just a little minor adjustment right and i reduce the lightness in the greens as you can see the job is doing in the cyan blue there was no blue so i took the blues out purple um magenta and the satur viral saturation so when i reset this this is all i did here in the color editor tab all right so let me undo that and let's get into the advanced so as you can see in the advanced i did something to the greens what i did was to reduce the saturation send the hue back a little bit into the yellows just a little bit but i know the white balance when i move it towards the colder region is going to do the job i need it to do after that i came into my color balance and as you can see this is what i have over here let me reset the color balance this was happening let me undo that and this was happening you can see i reduced the luminance in here and the midtones i also pushed in some blues into my yellows i mean sorry pushed in some blues into my shadows same for the highlights just so that i want to tone it down comparing it to where it started from and where it is now i think i like the direction i, I wanted it to cool down not look too sunny and you know warm with all these colors you just need to know how to control your colors when it comes to color grading your images i think that was that yeah that's that when it comes to you know um color grading or making basic adjustments here let me see did i do anything into the reds i don't think so neither green blue luma right so there's also one thing i want to explain when you want to make an image more softer always try and open up you know try and create an s curve but the opposite of an s curve instead of the s going this way you can have it this way a kind a, a kind of you know softens up the skin makes it a little bit more you know um glowy ish right let's compare the two um images this is the before and this is the after before after as you can see right mm, so if i even do that you can literally see it's the same thing okay so now let's just jump right into photoshop and i'll show you what i did in photoshop also so in photoshop let me just hide everything this is my you know my workspace i decided to do it this way if you want to understand why i did it this way i have a video i think when it comes to color correction i did a video for this let me just send it into tap mode right so you'll be wondering why these bars are there these bars are from the crop factor when you hit c on the keyboard right c on the keyboard it gives you the crop i wanted a 4x5 crop and i wanted every bit of the information in there so i decided to extend and when you do the extension let's see hit c you can see content aware when you do that you can see check on the content aware 
then that content i will create this for you and that being said when you do that you have these little you know repetition of um some of the you know parts of the image you tried using a content i went for and i used um the clone stamp tool and the healing tool to do some jobs in there also so this particular layer does everything for me healing clone stamp to trying to reduce the repetition and all that. i think i didn't do much of it when it comes to the repetition i did more of it at the latter part when i was you know exporting the image but yeah blemish removal and all that that was done and from there i did my dodging and burning i people always ask me do i use dodging and burning also for my skin work i mean full body swimmer portraits yes i do when i don't want to use shrinking separation i am trying to you know relearn how i used to make sure i was so good with frequency separation and it's been a journey and i'm 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 kind of excited to show you the new tricks i've learned when it comes to frequency separation so that's what happens with my dodging and burning as you can see when i hold alt or option on the keyboard you can see what i did in my burn and in my dodge right so before and after before and after let me zoom in before and after before and after this dmb global is something i learned from pixin perfect when it comes to dodging and burning quickly highlighting and contouring and uh, if you want to learn how to do that can you go check out his channel there's that and also there's backlight so i use the curves to you know reduce the um, brightness or you know the exposure of the background right i did a selection picked up the selection tool i'm using photoshop 2022 so it's easier to you know select subjects the ai does a perfect job i didn't really do much then this is the color lookup table color lookup table i use my caramel action my photoshop action i'm still selling them if you're interested so that's what sends the image from this to looking like this in photoshop right so sometimes i tend to not do any color grading in photoshop sometimes i tend to i wanted to limit the color grading to just her skin but looking at how it affected the whole image i kind of fell in love with it so i left it and i did some selective coloring so when i double tap and i move through the various you know presets i mean colors you can see in my blacks this is what i did white i think i only did some adjustments in the blacks sorry i did some adjustments in the blacks so this is the before and after i think it will, it will be difficult for you to see reason being i have you know um reduced the opacity so you know what let me just send this to 100 percent opacity so that you see what i did in there all right this is what i did to the image using the selective coloring then when i'm done i reduced the opacity or when i was done i reduced the opacity to minus so i think to 15 percent to get whatever it is i wanted then also looking at this image i saved it sent it to my phone i was like oh the sky now after you know reducing the light in there i think if i should put in some color into the sky or work and these are in the white as i said earlier when i started the video all right so with selective coloring i went into my white and i added some cyan into the white so if i turn on this you can see the white parts kind of grayish parts getting some cyan in the image right and as you can see the max would have affected the whole whites in the image i just needed them in this specific area so i just painted them in there right after that i did some hue matching hue check layer i think i've done a video on that you can go check that it's related to color correction in photoshop so i did a hue matching if you can see here i have two yellows and this is where i think the first one this is where the changes happened i literally turned my yellows towards the rest just so that i can have an even skin tone on the skin and after that the image felt a little bit reddish i figured out later when i exported it so i came back to do some adjustments in capture one so after i went into the hands i think you've seen a video of me you know 
talking about this Dehancer plugin. It works really well. I only added some, you know, um, halation and some bloom to this just to, you know, send it towards the kind of um, a print form emulation, um, a film, a film, a film vibe. Then this is the other clone stamp thing I said, making sure it was a randomized um, cleaning, not to make the um, the contents aware very visible. So that's that. That's everything I did in Photoshop. So if I should group everything, let's group. I mean, let's group everything. This is the before, and this is the after before and after so as you can see it looks quite reddish right then i saved this back into capture one then i did this i came into my color tab and in my white balance i took away some of the magenta right so if i should tap on the before this is before and this is after before and after and i also enhanced the color of the cyan i added into these white areas so i did that by using a color editor select it and i even changed the hue and as much as the cyan the small towards the blue cyan than the green cyan and i think i added some blacks and whites in the levels and yeah this is what i have so this is the before this is before photoshop i mean we saved came into capture one this is before i did any adjustment to whatever we've done in photoshop and this is after so yeah this is what i did to the image for all those who are interested in whatever i did this is what i did to it make sure you leave a thumbs up to this video if you found it informative enough and you want more of these overviews of how i go about certain edits on my page I'm, i think i'm going to go back to editing most of uh, you know my old pictures i think there are more pictures for me to edit and i need to edit more of them Yes, I think I need to go back to that. If you want to see more of that, let me know down in the comment section below. Subscribe if you haven't, if you're new here. I teach a lot. So just subscribe and learn something new on my YouTube channel. Share this video to other people who might be interested. And sorry for keeping you waiting. I'm, I'm still under the weather when it comes to my voice. I think you guys are hearing it. And thank you so much for, you know, supporting the channel. Like I mentioned when I started the video, help me reach 10k subscribers this year. And I will appreciate you guys. Thank you so much and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.